Compared to machines, humans have comically slow reaction times. In fact, the medium reaction time for the average aged adult is 0.215 seconds. So why is it that some PLCs update all program tasks at the same rate? If humans are unable to react to a stack light in 125 microseconds, why waste the processing power that could have been dedicated to a more critical task such as monitoring machine faults? This is where task configuration in Parker Automation Manager plays a critical role in allowing machine designers to have complete control on what tasks get executed and with what priority. Let me show you how. When you open up a new project for the first time, the task configuration already has a default task associated with it the ethercat underscore master. It also has an associated action already defined for it, the ethercat underscore master dot ethercat underscore task. So what is that exactly? The ethercat underscore master dot ethercat underscore task is a special object that represents the actual ethercat read-write bus cycle of the pack controller. If this object is renamed or deleted, your ethercat bus will fail to run. By double-clicking on the ethercat underscore master task, we see that it is set to a priority of zero. Priority simply dictates what other tasks can interrupt it. Zero is the highest priority where 32 would be the lowest. Remember, EtherCAT also is responsible for maintaining the distributed clocks on all of the EtherCAT slave devices. This is what makes precise coordinated server control possible. If this task was interrupted by other tasks, this clock would become out of sync. Thus, this task must be priority zero. This task is set up to run at every 4,000 microseconds or every 4 milliseconds by default. We can go ahead and change that to 1,500 microseconds. But users should be careful. The more extensive the programs that are put under this task, the longer that task will take to execute, meaning the EtherCAT bus cycle will send commands to the server drives and other slaves with less frequency. Thus, it is important to keep this task limited to only motion control commands and other extremely critical tasks. In fact, motion commands starting with the prefix MC or SM3 must be called from this task. So how do I add motion logic to this task? Simple. Say we have a continuous function chart or CFC POU, generically called P1, and it has all of our motion code. We simply click and drag it under that task. So here is how the ethercat master underscore tasks actually executes. First, it services the ethercat bus cycle, both reading the status of the slave's current conditions and writing the outputs from the last scan. Then it writes these values to the input table. With the latest input values, it'll now execute the logic found in P1. Lastly, it updates the output table based upon the changes that logic dictated by P1. Note, the outputs are actually not written to the slaves until the next ethercat bus cycle. So where do we place all of our lower level tasks such as general logic monitoring of IO and execution logic? To add an additional task, we simply right click on the task configuration, add object, add task. We'll call it main. To configure this new task, simply double click it. We will set its type to cyclic and its interval to 20 milliseconds. Since it's going to be handling our general PLC logic, I'm going to be changing the priority to 2. Often it is convenient to use different languages or use multiple POUs to keep code simplified. Whatever the reason, it is possible to have multiple programs executing within the same task. Say we had P2, which includes the overarching state machine of our code written in SFC, and P3, which is just some basic ladder logic that, say, handles a stack light. We simply click both of these and drag it down to the task. But what does its actual execution look like? Remember, this task does not have an EtherCAT scan, so the EtherCAT input variables are the same as the last EtherCAT scan and will not be updated until the next EtherCAT underscore task scan is executed. Non-EtherCAT inputs are updated at the beginning of this scan. Next, it executes the logic of P2 and then the logic of P3. Now, does order matter if P3 or P2 is executed first? No. Why? They're both pulling from the same input table. In other words, their logic is executing based upon the same input state regardless of the other code that has been executed in that same task. If you struggle with this concept, the best way to think of it is that the POUs in a single task execute at the same time and they do not affect one another until the next scan. Although this is technically incorrect, you will not go wrong with this way of thinking. Once all the POUs in this task have been executed, then the output table for that scan is updated. But what if we need a POU to execute once? I'm going to be adding an additional task by right-clicking Task Configuration, Add Object, 
and selecting task. Let's name this one event. I'm going to double click it and change it from cyclic to event. This means that this task will only execute the logic of the programs assigned to it once. This task is triggered by a rising edge of a bool. So let's say in this example that we want this task to be triggered by a global variable called critical error. I simply just have to type it in here. I'll click my program called P4 and drag it under the event task. Now let's see how this task executes. Remember, this task does not have an EtherCAT scan associated with it. So EtherCAT input variables are from the last EtherCAT underscore task scan. All other inputs are updated. Next, it executes the logic in P4 and updates the output table. And that's it. It never repeats, not at least until the bool goes low and then high again. So let's see how all of this would work together. First, let's review. The EtherCAT master task is a special task which controls the EtherCAT read-write cycle and should contain all of the motion code. Because it maintains distributed clock, it must be priority zero, and thus cannot be interrupted by any other tasks. However, the EtherCAT underscore task can interrupt both the event task and our main task. The event task is a single shot event triggered by a bool and only executes once. It can only interrupt the main task. Lastly, we have the cyclic task, which executes periodically by a user specified amount of time. This task executes as a traditional PLC scan. As it is our lowest set task, it cannot interrupt any of the other tasks. So here's what our execution would look like. First and foremost, you can see that the ethercat underscore master task executes first. Although not shown by this graphic, this includes the ethercat read write bus cycle time and then executes P1. As soon as that has completed execution, the main task with P2 begins. After P2, our event task has been triggered and executes P4, interrupting the main task. Once the event task has finished, it then returns back to the main task to finish execution. When nothing is currently executing, some system tasks will happen in the background. The ethercat underscore master then executes 1500 microseconds after the first. Then the main tasks, including P2 and P3, executes again, cyclically, 2000 microseconds after the first was triggered as well. The ethercat underscore master executes again, 1500 seconds after the second. And then, of course, our main task starts executing cyclically. The event task is seen here interrupting the main task. Once the event task is finished execution, it goes back to executing the main task for which P3 begins executing. However, it's been 1500 microseconds, so the ethercat underscore master task is ready to execute again. The ethercat underscore master task interrupts the main task right in the middle of the execution of P3. Once the ethercat underscore master finishes execution, it goes back to the main task of a priority of two and completes the execution of P3. I hope you can see that task configuration gives the machine builder complete and total control of your system so that the most time critical tasks are executed without interruption. Thanks for watching our video. With that, Please subscribe to our channel, visit the PAC product page, or have a discussion at the PAC forums.